Good morning, Process Excellent community, and welcome to Munich, Germany. We are here for two power pack days at Celesphere. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my favorite co host, Rob Stretche, for all of the action here. Rob, how are you feeling? This is our first time in Germany together. This is great. I, I think it's a wonderful community that has really embraced, I think, some of the keynotes that we'll get into later were just energizing in the fact that how people are really getting ready for AI. And I think that, to me, is really exciting in the ways we're doing it here. I know. So many good examples. And we've got a fantastic person to do that, yeah. field CTO for Solanus. But, you know, thank you so much for taking the time this morning to hang out with us. Yeah, great. Great to be here. Like, and welcome to Munich. So uh, happy to have you here. Uh, yeah. So I hope you, you enjoy the day. Uh, Absolutely. We, we appreciate you all hosting us. You have been at Solanus for almost a decade, the first product manager there. I can only imagine what this journey has been like for you. How does it feel? What, what, is, what does this decade mark mean for you? And to see all these smiling faces inside here at the event. I mean, that's, it, it's just uh, like heartwarming is maybe the one thing I, I would say. And it's super exciting, right? Like seeing so many people like being that hyped and excited about processes. You know, like when I started at Salona, I didn't even know what a business process was. <laughs> like, so, and now it's 10 years later, almost here having like 3,000 people all excited about business processes, how to optimize them and so on. You can imagine we, we never would have thought that we are, are, are here uh, where we are today. Yeah, I mean, the, the challenge of process mapping is not a new one, obviously. Like you said, it's been a journey. But what, I, what I've been getting, uh, we got to get here a little early and we got to talk to some of the partners yesterday. Yep. You had a partner day yesterday and some of the customers this morning and then hearing from the main stage from ExxonMobil and others that are seem to be accelerating in their journey for understanding processes and process mapping. How, how have you seen it evolve over the past, you know, five, ten years there? I think the big, big fundamental difference is doing it data first or data driven versus doing it um, like modeling and, and, and drawing a picture first, right? Like where it's been, like, like even before Salonas or like 20 years ago, you had process design as a, as a, as a discipline, right? So people were designing how to how the company should run. They were drawing the pictures. They were designing how a company should actually work. But these were kind of dead documents, right? Like they didn't like really connect to what's going on in reality. And when you like do it the other way around, you start with the data and you try to start with reality in a sense, right? Like what's really going on. You actually all of a sudden have a living a living thing. The process becomes a like almost a living uh, animal that you or a living creature that you can work with, right? Like and it, it's telling you. Uh, what's going on in reality, you can design it, when you change it, you see wh how it's impacting your day-to-day -day and so on. And it becomes really like an active uh, work element uh, for customers, and I think that's the fundamental change. And what we have seen in the last year is that it's just scaled. So like not doing that on you know, like a handful of, of you know, like cases that, that we look at, but really at an entire global company like Exxon, where you really look at billions of different items that are going through a process. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, we're dealing with more data now than ever. It's for yeah. you to bring that up. And, and every part of the organization now is generating different types of data. How, how is, and I know it's the biggest buzzword of the day and the biggest buzzword of the year, how is AI helping your customers solve those challenges given this exponential increase in data and, and the multitude of processes that come along with that? I think what we see most is, like, if you look at LLMs and what they're doing is they are just kind of fundamentally lowering the barrier, right? Like, you have the same information as before, but before that, you needed an absolutely super, super expert to help you solve the problem. Now you have access to a technology that actually makes it possible for you and me to actually optimize an account stable process. I I'm not an expert in account stable. I was going to say, are you assuming we're not no, super no, no, super no. Super <laughs> super. <laughs> like, But we have I'm access to, a, to an expert that helps us, you know, like, into understanding the data, interpreting the data if you give it access to the data, right? Like, I think that's what we heard at the, at the keynote, for example, this, like, fundamental um, idea that we give AI process intelligence as context so that it actually knows what's going on in your company. That's the enabler. So that actually this technology then also really can help you. Yeah, I, I mean, we see that all the time. In fact, we, I mean, data is the root of AI. Yeah. I mean, you can't do AI without data. And it looks like the, the process intelligence to us if you're going to go and build agents and agentic te technology, you really need to understand what is the process that that function that agent is going to do. Are you seeing that people are leaning into PI being kind of the root of AI? 
for this and how they're, I, I know it's the tagline all over the place yeah, here, but to me, that makes total sense to better understand how you build your agent. I, I think so. So, like, I mean, what we, what I always try to, like, compare it to is, even if you don't do the AI, if you want to have a consultant doing the job for you, you want him to do it based on the right information, the right facts, and the right understanding of the company. So now, like, swap, swap out the consultant with an AI system and an AI agent that does a part of your process. Of course, you want the AI system to also understand you. You want not, like, to, like, to all of the judgments or the decisions on generic knowledge. You want it to t- base the decisions on what's really going on in your company, what's special to you as Exxon Mobile, what's special to you as the F4 FDMW. Like, you know, like, building a, a car engine is fundamentally different than, like, petroleum. Right. So, like, you most likely want to have these, like, details taken into consideration when you execute or handle a part of the process. And that's essentially what's then powering the AI agents and why we see that many of our customers do that and then use that as a, as a basis. Yeah, I mean, I, I think to, to that point, I think a lot of the grounding and fine-tuning, it, it, before you even get there, you have to know what data you need, right? Yeah. And that, and you're doing a lot with, in, uh, with a lot of the ingestion of the data and things like that. You have, you know, uh, again, uh, a lot of new technology that is coming out. Have you seen this as just people are looking at their processes, the amount of data that goes along with the processes is just, just exploding? Yeah, and I think it's also, um, like when you look at where we started with Salomon, we started very classically with these core enterprise systems like CRMs, ERPs, and so on. But then when we, like in the last year, when we went for, okay, now we really want to have the entire process reflected in Salonis and if AI, for example, exited, of course you need also unstructured data like a document. Maybe, maybe an invoice comes in in the form of a paper invoice to you. So you need that piece of information as part of your process data. Or everybody of us is using email all the time, right? Like email contains so much information about how people are actually working, and right? Like you want to add that unstructured data to the, to the uh, process as well. And so on, right? Like this, like, like family of you know, like systems or sources where we get the process the data is, is growing and growing. I had dinner with one of your colleagues last night, and he was mentioning uh, something that I found really striking, that no sector uh, across the, the entire world has more than 10% of Salonis' business, meaning that you touch a variety of different industries and verticals. You being the field CTO, you, um, you've got to see some of the coolest use cases. You mentioned Exxon when you sat down. We saw that in the keynote as yep. well. What are some of the other really exciting applications that, that you find in your job? Um, yeah, so like there are a couple uh, actually. So um, one of the one of the most exciting ones that I uh, saw at least uh, yesterday. Yesterday, Alex mentioned on the on the keynote is we had a hackathon with uh, like thirteen customers, and there were one of the, some of the most exciting uh, use cases I've seen so far. Right, like one of them, like Daxter, who we also mentioned on the keynote. They actually uh, have built, like in one day, a, a prototype of an AI co-pilot that helps you actually um, reallocating like the truck loadings, right? Like so, like the AI system is helping the, the person who needs to decide, can the truck now go out of my uh, location or do they need to wait for another material to come? It gives you a recommendation, let the truck go or wait. And it's doing that based on, you know, like it has context on where are my production facilities and producing the goods that we are waiting for. We are waiting for some suppliers to deliver some of the stuff so they can take all of that into, into consideration and do an optimal, you know, like uh, truck loading for that. And that's just one example. And the cool thing is that they have been able to build that system in a day. Uh, yeah. And, 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 one and day. And this is your first hackathon, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. And I, I think one of the things, and you kind of just hit on it a bit, is that Salonis, even though it's software and yeah. it's, you know, uh, as delivered as a platform to uh, end users, it, it, it takes input from the physical world. I mean, there's there's processes and there's telemetry and stuff like that. Like Exxon Mobil, they have wells, they have, you know, refining uh, processes. Uh, you know, you're taking data from, like you said, ERP, uh, CRM, big data warehouses such as Snowflake and Databricks. How is it that when you see this, because I think the Exxon uh, process head was talking about this, is that when you start to see like the planning of the trucks, the planning of the, the ships coming into port, that's really the physical meeting that software and the cloud meeting, you know, the physical. How is it that you see that organizations look to lean into Salonis to really help 
bring those two together? Because that's almost like bringing AI and you know people together at that point. I think ultimately it's about what like think about this process first mindset, right? Like if you are a company, no matter what you're doing, you hopefully sell something to somebody, right? Like that's ulti- that's in the end of process. And then you have on the one hand side digital documents that are involved in that, your physical elements like people meeting each other. You may and then you hopefully produce a good in some way or another, right? We are our good is we write software, so like some people are doing that, right? Like and that's a process in the end that they that they operate. And um, our customers most of the time are more in the physical world, right? Like they produce a car, they uh, maybe build a, uh, an iPhone, um, and they you know like they they produce that that good, and that's also again a physical. You like like uh, interactions we see, but it's a process in the end again. But like you have these like the digital side of it, but you also have the physical side of it where things get 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 really done, and that comes together then in in in, in what we're doing at Solana. There's been quite an evolution in the different types of processes that Solana can optimize, as, as, especially since we've seen it all since almost day one. Quite frankly, what are some of the, the processes that you think we're going to be able to optimize in the next couple of years with the new announcements that have just happened that we weren't able to do or would have been excruciatingly slow or challenging to do yep. previously? I think the biggest part is, in my opinion, the what's happening outside of IT systems today. So, like. I think a big part of what companies are doing, like finance with ERP, customer relationships with CRM, um, IT service management in ITSM systems, right? Like that's like very classical to what post mining and post intelligence is doing. But when you look at AI and how this enables us to actually understand like unstructured information, unstructured, understand even visual elements of the world around us, what that allows us to do is to understand and structure all of a sudden how people, for example, interact with each other. And that's not in a system today, right? Like maybe yeah. we, we all use like email is always the easiest example, but like a lot of the actual daily work of a of a process is people meeting each other, people talking to each other, people actually writing each other, and that's like part of how process actually lives and executed. And 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 adding that and enabling to actually also influence that is actually I think one of the biggest things we will see. And then you could flip it around and also look at the physical world, what we just talked about. Think about the production facility. Reality is that only a fraction of, uh, of these facilities are really IoT ready. Mm-hmm. But what do you have? You have actually very often you have images. You have images of the production lines, you have video of the production lines. Being able to also influence that and take that as a as a piece of a business process, I think will also be a, like a big big game changer to expand uh, what we're doing. I can't wait to see how that pans out. Manu, this has been absolutely awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for taking the time. Rob, always a pleasure sharing the stage with you. And thank all of you for tuning in to our 24 different segments here at Salona Cellosphere. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Mm-hmm.